Ira Scott is an American finger painter. She got her start when she was too lazy to wash out her brush and decided to finish a painting with her fingers instead. The experiment paid off as she was able to create a vibrant paintings full of movement and life and by using her fingertips and oil paints. She paints subjects from animals to landscapes and portraits. So we're going to get started today making our own theme from Ira Scott's Shaking Dog. When you grab your pencil and start drawing out your dog, you'll notice that my paper is tilted horizontally. I tilt my paper so that I don't have to draw it sideways when I begin on the head. The thing that helps me make the dog look like it's got movement at the end is that the head is tilted, and so is the direction of the ears to help it make it look like it's shaking its head. So if you want to use the guides on um, your packet that has some examples of dog pictures, that might help you as you begin. The tongue is optional if you want. Let's get started on painting the dog. You'll notice that I grabbed some paints that I thought would work really nicely for this type of dog. When I got started with my paint, you'll notice I used the double load brush. I'm not washing out my brush ever until I get to the pink and the white for the mouth and the ears. So when I grabbed my, my um, black and my white paint, I'm making gray right onto the page. I want to make that paint onto the paper like it has a loaded brush that you can see the brush strokes by the time that this paint dries. I love the way that looks. It doesn't look so flat as in one color of gray, but instead if I'm looking at my paints and I think to myself, I want the top part of the dog to be a little bit darker and the bottom parts of the dog to be a little bit lighter. So I think about putting dark paint at the top with light paint at the bottom. So in my head, without mixing my paints, I just think, which color do I need right now? Do I need more white or do I need more black? And I'll start to apply that without ever mixing my brush. I just constantly keep going back and grabbing more paint, whether it's white paint to make it lighter or black paint to make it darker. Just mix it right onto the page. We love the way that a painterly look looks when it's finished and dried. Keep those brush strokes. Please don't leave it so smooth. Let those brush strokes show through in this painting. It also not only makes it look more painterly, but it makes the dog look like it's got more fur or a little bit of texture into the animal. Please don't worry about covering over any of your lines with pencil or Sharpie because we're going to make it show up again later. I love the way that this project looks like texture, that the fur is starting to develop by the way that I put my paint onto the page. Now I took my brush and I washed it because I'm going to start adding my white and my red. Notice how much white and only a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of red. Red is a lot stronger than white, just like when you used your black. So as I start getting my paints out, white is very light. The other colors are strong. Now that my project is dry, I'm grabbing a black oil pastel and I'm retracing or redrawing all those lines. The cool thing about paint is sometimes you can see your Sharpie through the paint. So that helped me a lot that I didn't have to think too much about where I originally drew my lines because I can see through it onto my paper. If you can't see it, that's okay. Just go back to your drawing guide and second time that you draw it will sh should be a lot easier. Using my black oil pastel, I'm going to outline over top of my pencil lines. Boy, I really like the way that the black pastel makes my dog stand out and defines each body part of my animal. Once I've outlined with my black oil pastel, I'm going to get a pair of scissors and start cutting out my animal. I 
I sped this up because I didn't feel like you needed to watch all of the cutting. Grab your glue bottle, stick it down to a black piece of paper, and let's go to some splatter paint. When you use splatter paint, you're going to take a tiny bit of paint into a container and add a little bit of water. I wouldn't add too much because I don't want to have a lot of paint going down the drain. So only a tiny bit. Grab your brush and mix the paint with the water. As you're mixing, it's going to create a really nice consistency so that the paint's not quite so thick. When you add more water, only add a little bit at a time. Now that you've got a nice consistency and it's kind of runny or drippy, I'm ready to start splatter painting. In your cardboard box, take your finger and just tap your brush onto your finger to let the paint drop off of the paintbrush. You're going to let that drop on to make it look like that dog is shaking and the spray and the water starts going everywhere. What a great way to show movement. What a great way to show expression in that dog. Try some different colors. I tried mixing a little bit of pink with some blue and some purple and I felt like my colors were pretty dark so I thought I'd add some white with some water as well. I always add water to my paint to make the splatter effect work. Now I'm going to take my finger and just like Iris Scott, I'm going to start doing some droplets that are pretty big to make it look like that dog is showing movement. Now you can take a look at these steps again in a really fast pace with a different kind of dog. This is a nice way to review some of the steps only with different colors. Draw it, outline it, and double load your brush. Grabbing my brown and white, I'm going to start mixing and doing the double load brush. You can see how the colors start to mix onto the paper. I never take my brush and start mixing onto the plate or the aluminum foil. All of the mixing happens right onto the paper. Just grab more paint when your brush runs dry. Load up the two colors that you want, or if you need more of one color than the other, just go to one color and add it to your paper. You don't always need two colors of paint onto your brush. Sometimes one is plenty because you need more of another color. Look at how that brush stroke makes it look like hair or fur. I sped it up quite a bit because I'm going to be doing the same techniques throughout the rest of the dog. If you make a mistake, no big deal, just paint over it. Like the previous example, grab your black oil pastel, go over your pencil lines and cut out your shape. Glue it down to a piece of black paper and now you'll be ready for splatter painting. Head to your cardboard box, take your paint and start using that technique of tapping the brush onto your finger to enjoy the splatter. Make sure you're using plenty of water and have some fun. When you're done with the splatter paint, get your finger and add some of those bigger droplets to make it look and show movement into your artwork. I hope you had fun. I know I sure did. This was a really fun project. Have fun everyone. <laughs>